Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. It is a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. As always, we believe it is a day to praise the Lord. Let's get a Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to his name. Oh, this is a special Sunday morning. I am Pastor Mark McCoy, and I welcome you to God in the Midst Get Em Radio Broadcast, the Sunday School Lesson Edition. And I have special guests with me this morning to do the Sunday School Lesson. I have my wife, Lady Sandra. Then I have my twin sister, Lady Mary, and her husband, Lenny. Oh, it's going to be off the chain this morning, y'all. Ah! <laughs> Praise the Lord. Say hi, everybody. Hey, all right, all right. Oh, Mom. I know you online listening in, Mom. We, hey, Mama, good morning. We, we're in Nashville, Tennessee. We went to a concert last night. We got to see uh, Rochelle Pharrell. We got to see Boney James. We got to see Hiroshima. We had ourselves a good grown folks time, amen? And so we all at the hotel, and, and we said, well, Let's do the Sunday school lesson together. Now, I think I I, I got them I got them all all hooked. I think I got them all. You know, you know, you know what I'm saying. You know, they they was resisting, but we we're gonna have a good time this morning. Let's go now to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to know you as our Lord and Savior. We thank you, Lord, for being who you are the one that sits on high and still looks down low. We thank you, Lord, that you are awesome, marvelous, and magnificent God. We thank you, God, that, that you woke us up this morning, clothed us in our right minds, and gave us a reasonable portion of health and strength. Lord, we just lift you up this day. And we ask you, Lord, as, as you continue to bless us, bless this conference call. Bless the Heavenly Father, all of this technology on uh, with Facebook and and, and live and streaming and, and the hotel that we in that their 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 uh system internet system works well this day. Now Lord, we just ask you to, to touch those that are listening now and that are listening in the future. Help them, dear Heavenly Father. Help us all, dear Lord. Touch us one more time. We plead your blood over our lives, over our families, over our community. We plead your blood, dear Lord, over our country and this world. We know you're able to do it exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power of Christ Jesus working in us. He that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. We love you, Lord, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, our lesson today, our lesson today comes from uh, Psalms 34, verses 1 through 10. And Hebrews chapter 2, verses 17 through 18. And we're going to read this out. We're going to read it in a uh, uh, responsive reading format so everybody get a chance to say something. Psalm, so we're going to start out with Psalm 34, verses 1 through 10. This is a Psalm of David when he changed his behavior before Abimelech, who drove him away and he departed. Verse 1. I will praise, I mean, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened, and their face were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of his trouble. The angel of the Lord encamped 
around about them that fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. Our lives do lack and suffer hunger, but they seek the Lord, shall not want any good thing. Hebrews now, chapter 2, verses 17 through 18. Wherefore, verse 17 says, Wherefore in all things it, it beloved, wherefore in all things it beloved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself had suffered being tempted, he is able to secure them that are tempted. Hallelujah. That is our reading of the text this morning. Uh, the key verse, the key verse for this lesson is verse uh, 30, I mean, verse 8 of Psalm 34. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. The, the, the key concept for this lesson is to trust God to provide for you and to protect you. Our keys to this message are in three parts. God is always there for us. God is good, number two, and always keeps his promise. And number three, praise and trust God because he is good. Oh, hallelujah. And then the aim for this lesson, today's aims, we're going to look at some learning facts. We're going to describe the connection between Psalm 34 and Hebrews chapter 2, verse 17 through 18. Our biblical principle is to emphasize God's desire and ability to provide for his people. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. And then our daily encouragement, what we want to walk away with from this lesson is to encourage one person in the weeks in the week to ahead who is experiencing affliction and suffering. We want to be encouraged. Oh, hallelujah. So we're going to break this lesson down into three parts. Uh, we're going to talk about the call to praise, and then we're going to talk about the call to care to a caring God, and then we're going to talk about a call on Jesus. Call on Jesus. Hallelujah. So a background for this lesson, a background for this lesson, it's, 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 it's a very interesting lesson because it starts off with this Psalms 34. And Psalms 34 is one of those psalms that has a heading. And the heading describes, as it said, is this. And a psalm of David, that means David wrote it, and when he changed his behavior before Abimelech, who drove him away and he departed. So, so this, this is a psalm that David wrote at a time where he was in a situation where Saul, King Saul, was now mad at him. King Saul was upset with him because when, when he came into the city and came to come back from a battle, uh, uh, the women would sing, Saul killed a thousand, but, 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 but David has killed uh, 10,000. So Saul had a jealous spirit, a, a spirit of envy. And so David was running for his life. And he ended up in the area with the Philipp, uh, Philippians, uh, uh, Philipp, uh, Philistines. Thank you, everybody. Philistines, and, and the king of the Philistines was Abimelech. And, and then what he ended up doing, in order to, to not be captured by the Philistines and killed, he started acting crazy. Oh, hell, hallelujah. You got to act crazy sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Say, so don't throw something up. I know karate. You got to tell him I know crazy. And when you act crazy, Sometimes folks just leave you alone. Come on, Mr. Yabro. Say man. <laughs> they let, they let, they let old, let old David go. And, 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 and so David, David then posed this song. He put this song together. And, and the first 10 verses 
of this psalm is a thanksgiving psalm. It's a thanksgiving psalm. And 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 and, and my, be mindful, be mindful. I got to go back a little bit. Be mindful that this is what they call a, 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 an acrostic poem, an alphabet acrostic poem. That means that it starts with the letter A and ends with the letter Z. But this is a Hebrew song, so they only have 22 letters. And so it's in the Hebrew alphabet. And I don't know the Hebrew alphabet to call it off the top of my head, but it's just a blessing to know that it's an acrostic song. Uh, song. And so here we are now. Here we are looking at that, that text, looking at that text. Then we have the other text, which is the Hebrew text. The Hebrew text comes from a different setting altogether. The book of Hebrew was written to Christians from a Jewish background who were suffering their own version of rejection and, and being uh, ostracized for choosing to follow Jesus as their Messiah. And the pressure to return to Judaism was intense. And so the writer who is not named in the book urges them to, to, to not do so unless they abandon all that they have received in Christ. And so this portion of the text in Hebrews chapter two comes from the place where the writer is talking about Jesus is the better. Jesus is the greater. Jesus is, in fact, the perfect high priest. And so that, that sets up the background for this lesson. So, so we're gonna get now into the depths of the lesson the first, the first uh, three verses of Psalm 34, uh, verses 1 to 3, is the call to praise. Listen to it again. I will praise the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. This is a call to praise. And so, so we're gonna do this in a question and answer kind of situation. And uh, the first question we have, what did David make, well, what did David make up his mind to do regarding his situation? And any one of y'all can jump in or multiple ones can jump in. Coming from verse one. He will bless the Lord. He will bless the Lord. Mm -hmm. the, the thing that sort of jumps out to me is he said that I will bless the Lord at all times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, it, it seems to signify to me that the Lord understands that we're going to be going through some situations. Yeah. Right? And that not only in the good times, but in the times of distress as, as depicted here, it is an opportunity to be focused on our praise and our appreciation for God, for being God all by himself. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, I would think, and it has been my experience. Come on now. That your mind is not focused on that distress. Yes. But rather it is placed in a place where something can be done about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And someone is able to do Come something. Come on now, who's able? So God is able. <laughs> yeah. So he, uh, David, uh, you know, opens up this thing, and it's interesting to me that he he he, he uses three verses, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. To tell us what to do. What to do. In times of trouble. In times of trouble. In times of distress. No, at all times. And then at all times. At all times. <laughs> Yeah, 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 you know, having been through some very difficult things in my life, mm -hmm. uh, you know, this is uh, the this was the key, this was the bridge, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. amen. Anyone else? I also want to point out too, he said, This phrase shall continually be in my mouth, so it wasn't like he was going to stop, and everything that he did. Just like uh, Lenny said, uh, through the, all the good times and the bad times, but he was going to continually praise God, even as he continued to be bombarded with uh, bad things or pressures or whatever. He had to continually praise God. He had to continually keep himself in a spirit of praise 
sort of so that it would be like a covering for him uh, to protect him from all of the stuff that was going on around. Amen. 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 You want to add anything, Nick? Hmm. Not yet. Okay. Well, I, I just want to say on, one more on, thing on, about on. this particular set of verses. I always like to look at things in reverse. Okay. Now, I was on an executive board at a church one time, and we were looking at uh, how we might distribute benevolent funds. Yeah. Right? And uh, in the discussion, it came up that uh, we should give it to the poor. All right. Okay, of course, me being this, an astute person, I looked up the word poor. Who is the poor? I defined, I looked up the definition for poor. Uh-huh. Okay, and poor means it has, it's not a, a socioeconomic thing. Mm-hmm. Poor means to be without hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the opposite of verses one, two, and three, not having praise in your heart, in your mouth at all times, not blessing the Lord at all times, is to be without hope. Oh, mercy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's a dark place. It's a dark place. Mm-hmm. Because you have to deal with them problems by yourself. Mm-hmm. You have to understand that the rent, you will think that the rent cannot be paid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You see, I'm with you. And so, when you start that blessing and when you're in that frame of mind Mind. Mm -hmm. and we want to say in times of trouble and of course just the context of the lesson yeah but it is good it is a good thing to magnify the lord as the scriptures say yes at all times at all times yeah at all times and to not do that is a dark place dark place it's a it's a place without hope yeah 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 and we we're here to encourage hope right we're here to encourage hope right why would we do this otherwise yeah 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 and so and so uh in this in this the next question is to what extent was david's enthusiasm for god and those are verses that come out of verses two and three and so right. he, listen to this. I, I, I just love verse two. I, he says, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord and, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. I, y'all, y'all know, I, I, when, when, you, when you give God praise from your heart, and, and you magnifying the Lord from your heart, and you telling the folks, won't he do it? Yeah. Won't he do it? Yes. Yes, he will. <laughs> it, it, it always seems that you are like a light, and the haters are like a moth to the flame. <clears throat> and they come around and and, and, and and they don't hear what you're saying. They hate on what you're saying. But those who have a humble spirit. Those that understand that you're boasting about the God that could, would, and has. Oh, it's an awesome thing. I, I'd like to make a <laughs> come on, cook a man. Here in verse two, mm-hmm. well, the contrast from verse one is this: shall continually be in my mouth is something that everyone else can hear. Mm-hmm. Everyone else can 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 see. It, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's more tangible. But when you talk about my soul, yeah, that's talking about things that are eternal. Yeah, come on now, you know. Um, and when you talk about you know my heart, and then he use words like boast and uh, humility, uh, which a lot of people mistake as a weakness. Yeah, yeah, you know, and gladness. Mm-hmm. But when you go from mouth to soul, you're going from earth to eternity. Ooh, come on now. All right now, because that's where eternity lives in your heart, yeah, in your soul. That's those are things of eternity. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Come on, anybody? Uh, uh-uh, y'all got to say something now. <laughs> <laughs> well, those first three verses are powerful. Yeah. yeah. So, 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 one of the things. This is this is my personal. This is me personal. I am typically, on any occasion and on every occasion, a very loud and boastful person. But people don't understand that at the same time I'm boastful, I'm very humble. 
because I know where he brought me from. I know what he brought me through. I know that at any moment, if it was up to my flesh, if it was up to the world, and if it was up to the devil, he would have me back in his grips. But thanks be to God that, that, I, that inside, inside, you don't see my soul. God does. And it's home. And, and I'm glad. So, so if I'm in church, I'm loud. If I'm at the party, I'm going to be loud. That's what I do. That's who I am. But I know it's, it's my God. It's my God. And so I can say, oh, magnify. At all times. Oh, magnify at all times. the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. That's my thing. I want folks to magnify the Lord with me and exalt his name together. See, see let me explain something. Let me explain something. Since my, my ladies don't want to jump in and talk, but y'all going to have to talk about this next part. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let y'all roll with it. Um, the, uh, there's a thing about yawning. If you start yawning, it's contagious. Oh, did y'all hear me? If I were to yawn right now, you might have had a great night's sleep. That yawn will cause you to yawn. Yeah, just thinking about it, make you want to yawn. But, but what David says is, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I, if a yawn can be contagious, what do you think a praise ought to be? What do you think if you're exalting the Lord, what it ought to be? It ought to be contagious. And I just, it just, just oh, hallelujah. It just gets me uh, when I'm up in church and I'm praising God and folks looking at me. It don't take all of that. What do you mean it don't take all? I don't know about you. It wasn't me. They woke myself up this morning. It was not my long clock, but it was the hand of God. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, come on. Come on now. I have to go and another translation about that. So I'm hoping to hear it. Here of and be glad. So I'm in God's word. And it says, uh, oh, those who are oppressed will hear it and rejoice. Yes. So, so it's like looking at it from another standpoint, being humble. This translation calls the humble oppressed. It translates it as oh. oppressed. So oppressed. There, there goes the hope. hope. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. hope that mm -hmm. someone else can, they can see it. They, you've spoken it with your mouth. And then it said, my soul shall boast. They see it all over your countenance. And then it says, so when they see it, when they hear it, then they, oh, wow. That's her. Okay, then something. They got something that I need to get. Yeah, into, yeah. That I need to grab a hold of. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Sandra. Come on, Mary. Well, one of the things the Lord has been doing with me about is um, it is wonderful and good to know the love of God. Yeah. But there's a second part to it. Mm -hmm. You have to also respond to the, the love, love of God. God. And I think these three verses are a clear example of responding to, to the, the love, love of God. God. Yeah. 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 I, David at that time, I think because of all that he was going through and all the pressure that he was experiencing mm -hmm, at that time, mm -hmm. he clearly took the time to say, I know God loves me. Yeah. But then he started responding Spot. to the love of God. Yeah, that's yeah. great. So that's all great. of these three verses, I think, are a clear example of him responding to the love of God and giving us an example, example. of how to respond to the love, love of God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is our call to praise. We ought to praise him because he has loved us. We ought to praise him because no matter what's going in our life, he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. We ought to praise him because he is the one that when our souls are poor, 
when our souls are humbled, because see, sometimes humbling comes from humiliation. And when so all of that is in play here, we are a magnified alone. And then it ought to be contagious. The rest of us should grab a hold to it. Oh, hallelujah. Now we're going to move to our next point, is the call to a caring God. Listen, listen, listen to verses 4 through 10. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from what? From all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. The poor man, come on back now. The poor man cried, and, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of his troubles. Now, this verse here is the one that really gets me. I want y'all to listen to this verse very slowly. The angel of the Lord. It does not say the angels of the Lord. It says the angel of the Lord encamped around about them uh, that fear him and deliver it then. Then he says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. So what, what was the result of David seeking the Lord? Come on, y'all. Jump on in. Well, deliverance, of course. Deliverance. You know, and uh, in these verses, it's very interesting how they apply to different people at different times mm -hmm. in different situations. All right. For example, in verse four, it's a singular thing and it's personal. Yes, it's personal. I. I. In verse five, you know, uh, it's plural. It's plural. Yeah. They. That. And then it gets to condition. Yeah. In six, mm -hmm. this is a poor man. Oh, man. This is a man without hope. Yeah. It's saying, I don't know which way to turn. Mm -hmm. And then the angel. Then the angel. It didn't say the angel came by, was on the other street. Yeah. <laughs> That's in good. His, in her car. Uh huh. It's good. He saw the poor man. No, no. Driving by. No, no. This angel was obviously dispatched. Yes. To this poor man, a uh, person without hope. Mm -hmm. And camped. And in camp. Sat there and said, Listen, I'm here with you. Yeah. Right? That, that, that's somebody should hear that today. Mm -hmm. And then in verse 8, the word taste is yeah. what speaks out to me. Yeah. Because taste means you digest, you internal. You, you chew it. You swallow it, and the nutrients of that feed your body and your mind. Mm -hmm. And then there's this healthy fear. Yeah. Fear and then in verse 10, you know, it seems to be where David is pointing out that youth has some folly with it. Oh, yes. And that maturity. Is, is key. However, it says, if you seek the Lord, that you shall not want. And, it, and it's important to look at all of the words, mm -hmm. any good, good thing. thing. Yeah. And that's because all good things yeah. come from the Lord. Nah. <laughs> amen. Amen. Come on. I mean, that's how these verses were jumping out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's good. I said my part. Here, that's right? good. That's good. <laughs> that's right. good. That's good. You know. All right. Mary, Sam. Nah. Come on, y'all. That's good. I, mama, mama, I know you're over there saying, Woo, that's good to me. <laughs> it's a simple thing that we're being asked to do. Yeah, it's a simple thing. It's necessary to bridge the gap between any person on earth and God who created the universe. Universe, yeah. 
Yeah, praise, praise at all times. Amen. All right, come on, come on, ladies. Well, it is, you know, this is uh, an obvious thing, but it is wonderful to know that you can speak and mm -hmm. pray to God and he actually hears you. Mm -hmm. That in itself is comfort to me. Yes, yes. That when, when I pray, he hears me. Yeah. And that had to have been, for all that yeah. David was yeah. experienced, that had to be a comfort, comfort to him. him. Yeah. That he called on the Lord, Lord. and the Lord heard, heard him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you think uh, encouraged David to do this? Because, you know, there was no Mark, no Pastor Mark. Saying, David, you need to praise God. Yeah. There was no Lenny breaking it all down and saying, okay, yeah, this technically is what we need to do. <laughs> you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. You know, so what, what do you think encouraged well, him to well, do that? Well, well th this is the thing. I have learned that when you are hurting and when you are in pain and when you are in trouble or you are being afflicted, those things are not bad in and of themselves. Yeah, it hurts. But I tell you, they make you realize that there is a high power. They make you realize that you ain't in control of everything. And a wise man and a wise woman says, wait a minute. I ain't got to take this. I know somebody that can fix this. And I think that's the point. I think that's the point. <laughs> The, the text is from the 34th verse. Yeah. Psalm. Mm -hmm. All right. That means David already knew God. He already knew God. And he knew who God was and was capable of doing. So to me, this is one of the apex verses in Psalm mm -hmm. where it's this epiphany. It may not have been an epiphany for David. You know, he just knew to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Because he had he had a faith fire. Right. You yeah. know, when I he mean, was out there in the field, yeah, right. in the <laughs> shepherd. You know, fighting lines and all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, you know, he had a faith fight. He already done yeah. built the, you know, hit the Philistine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he did not the lines out. Yeah. He had a faith fight. Yeah. Like, does anybody really understand? That's, does that's anybody a, got a faith fight? That's, <laughs> that's a point that you got to realize yeah. that this ain't something you just like, well, I think I'll fight you. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not. Yeah. No, no. And he, he had a, a faith fight. It was known that he was a man after God's own heart. Right. Mm -hmm. And right. so that means that he had a relationship. God knew a relationship. him. Yeah. God knew him. He had a relationship even as a child. And maybe it was displayed in his home. His parents um, sought the Lord. Right. And it was something that it was ingrained in him. It was taught to him until he and, and God saw the purity of his heart, heart. The, right. the the love that was in his heart, the genuineness that was in his heart. And so that's why he said he was a man after God's own heart. And then as he's doing things as a young boy in the field, as he's protecting the sheep and these lions come up and right. bears and stuff come up and he kills them with his slingshot or his bow. And it's like, how oh, is a little boy able to do that? And then he goes and he has enough faith because of because of his past experience, yeah. right. he, right. was That's the go, yes. he was able to go and kill Goliath. Right. So here Goliath is talking about our God, God Almighty. And so they was like, y'all, y'all the men of y'all the men, the warriors. Yeah, exactly. And you out here scared just because they tall and they big. I don't even need them. We got them need them. And he goes running up through the men with his slingshot and, shoo, and he takes out. Goliath, because he trusts in God. So, like you said, Mark, he had a faith file, and so that that's what I think helped him to um, to say this, to, to just come to this point. He knew where he could go uh, in the midst of his trouble. Mm -hmm. it, this was this was really bad trouble here yeah. because he was trying to be killed. A little bit different from when the lions attacked him, or but it was still something to be fearful of. So he feared for his life. So he knew, okay, God, okay, God, I know. all right, this, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm like yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like crazy. It's gonna buy me a little time, mm -hmm. and then I'm, it, and and thanks be to God. If you knew that this, I mean, it said in the background, this king knew that David had a record for killing thousands. Yeah. So 
even though he played crazy, why would you let him go? Mm -hmm. That had to be the hand of God. Hand of God. Hand Letting of God. him just they okay, he acted crazy. We don't want him. Uh, if you don't want him, just kill him. Right. Yeah. But he did not, he God did not, did not allow him to, to be, be killed. killed. So now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, now I want to add something else to this because as you guys were talking, it brought up something in my spirit. We need to understand that David was on the run mm -hmm. from Saul. Mm -hmm. Saul was mm -hmm. Saul was the one pursuing, pursuing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and and David did not want to touch God's anointed. Right. Right. David could have killed Saul, right. Right. Yeah, but but he didn't want to do it because he knew who Saul was in the Lord. So let me break this thing down. It's three things that are very important to me in life. Trust, loyalty, yeah. and integrity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Them three. Good values. Good values. Mm -hmm. But people misuse your trust. Yeah. People manipulate your loyalty. But our job is to never let anybody mess with our integrity. Mm -hmm. And David held to his integrity. He would not touch the Lord's anointed, and he trusted in the Lord to get him through. Because those, the Lord is the one we should trust. Well, you know that's a saying that says, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall, fall for anything. anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll fall for anything. And, and I think this is, that's a good point. I like to talk about values and things like that because that's where you know where you're right or wrong, mm -hmm. right? But at all times, I will bless the Lord. Yes. Mm -hmm. And his praise shall continually be mm -hmm. in my mouth. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it, it is a powerful verse uh, 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 and I'm, I'm eager to see the connection to Hebrew. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so when we look at this, he says, he, 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 he sought the Lord. He heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. It didn't say he delivered him from the situation. But he it delivered him from the outcome of his imagination. Come on now, because that's what fear is all about. You know, it's all in the mind, and the devil uses that against us. And so he looked at that. He said, "No, no, 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 no. I'm on. I sought the Lord. I sought Him, and I, I'm encouraging someone to seek the Lord." Then the next one, he says, "Then the, they, they." He says, "That that's that's when, when as Lenny said." That they looked onto him and were lightened, and their face were not ashamed. Who did they look on? Who is the they? That's going to be everybody. Right. And he said, if you look at God, if you look to the hills from which cometh your help, knowing all your help comes from the Lord, he, he will shine his light on you. And, and when he shines his light on you, you don't have to worry about being ashamed. Then he broke it down. He said, now the poor man. And we had a good discussion on the poor man. The poor man cried. Uh, no, it wasn't one of them porcelain throne cries. <laughs> so he said, I don't know if y'all know about the porcelain throne cry. That's that's when you've drunk too much and, and you 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 on your knees at the porcelain throne going, ah! and you start crying, Lord, if you give me a I'll never drink again. No, no, no. That ain't that ain't no poor man's cry. That's a drunk man's cry. <laughs> but, but, but when but when you got a situation where all your hope is gone, and you don't know what to do, that's the time you pause. Your hope is gone. And he is saying, the Lord heard him because he had a sincere prayer. The Lord heard him because he wasn't making no promises. The Lord heard him because he, he was just calling out to the Lord. I'm talking to somebody right now. You don't know how you're going to get out of your drug addiction. You don't know how you're going to get out of your financial situation. You don't know how you're going to get out of your broken relationship situation. Don't be trying to do it yourself. Understand. You're insufficient. Understand. You don't have the ability. Call on the Lord. 
And when you call on him, he'll hear you. And then he says, now, not only will he hear you, if you don't know him as your personal Savior and Lord, you don't have a relationship with him, he's going to still hear you. Because God hear everything. And he will save you out of your trouble. And as Lenny just said, the next verse said, he'll send an angel to account all around about you. All about them that fear him, and he delivers them. Oh, I just love that. I have a story of one of my cousins who was strung out on heroin. And she was out in the street doing a heroin bad, bad situation. And, and, and she knew the Lord from a little child. Been knowing the Lord. And she called on the Lord. And the Lord heard our cry. And instantly she was sober. Now, I ain't saying she ever got off of heroin. I, I, I ain't saying that. But she knew the Lord. And he delivered her that night. Because if she had fell asleep on the streets where she was, she'd have probably been dead. I'm just saying, God has a way of sending his angels. The angel of the Lord will encamp us. And then this next verse. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. My mama has a saying, this is good to me. <laughs> Have you ever had some food that was so good that you wanted to slap your mama? <laughs> Fella heard me say that at work. He said, what, you, what does that mean, slap your mama? Slap your mama means that something is so good to you that you'll go against every principle of your life. <laughs> To tell somebody how good it is. And the best way to tell somebody how great it is is to slap your mama. To to get slapped. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I didn't mean to do that. No, no, that's right on time. And he said, oh, taste and see. Internalize it. Taste the Lord for yourself. Taste the Lord and see for yourself. We, we, we are folks. My sister got on her Cardinal shirt. We're from St. Louis. We're from East St. Louis. We all kick it in Missouri. Missouri is the show me state. You got to see it for yourself, but you have to taste it and you will see. You have to believe it and you will receive it. Come on, somebody. Then he says, Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. This reminds me of that verse that says, seek the Lord and his righteousness and the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added unto you. Everything you need. It's all about seeking the Lord. If you're hungry for a word, seek it. If you're hungry for anything, seek it. If you're young, and I'm just going to say it in stupid, seek the Lord. Because <laughs> the young ones do lack. What do they lack? They lack wisdom. And they're suffering. Hungry for wisdom and knowledge. And understand the hunger for a relationship with God. Well, in order to get that, you got to seek the Lord. And he will give you whatever you stand in the need of. Now, we're running out of time and we got to move on to this last two verses. And Lenny asked the question, how is these two verses connected? I want you to go back to seven. It's uh, verse seven. And it says, the, the angel of the Lord encamp around about them that fear him and deliver him. Who, who is the angel of the Lord? Who is the angel of the Lord? Who is the angel of the Lord our God? It's Jesus. It's Jesus. Now, somebody find this in the Message Bible. You got your Message Bible, baby. Find verse 17 and, and 18 in Hebrew. It's going to really start at 16 in the Message Bible. I want you to find it, but I'm just going to read out the King James while you're looking for it. The King James Version says, 
and and, and and since I'm going to be reading out of the Message Bible, I'm going to go back to the um, um, 16th verse because when we look at, read it out of the Message Bible, it's going to start at the 16th verse. Come on, Bible, give give me the, you got Hebrews 16. Oh, yeah, here we go. I got it. I got it already marked. Here we go. Listen to verse starting at verse 16. It says, for indeed, he does not give aid to angels, but he does give aid to the seeds of Abraham. Therefore, in all things, he had to be made like his brother, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make propitiation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted. He is able to aid those who are tempted. Now, read it out of the message Bible. It's obvious, of course, that he didn't go to all this trouble for angels. It was for people like us, children of Abraham. That's why he had to enter into every detail of human life. Mm. Then, when he came before God as high priest to get rid of the people's sins, he would have already experienced it all himself. All the pain, all the testing, and would be able to help where help was needed. Amen. 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 Have you ever went to get help from somebody and they couldn't help you. Oh. Yeah. Whether it's a job, you go, you got a question and the person can't help you. You call the IT folks and they can't help you. See, I, I, I had problems getting on the internet in this hotel. I called down to the front desk, they couldn't help me. And then I went down to the front desk and the right person was there. And you know what that person did? They called the IT people. <laughs> then the IT people called me. So I got my help. I'm trying to tell you something. See, 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 when 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 you know that, that, that you need help, the word of God says, first of all, call on the elders that they might pray for you. And, and if you don't know, you better get somebody to do know. You better call somebody. But one thing we do know, you can always call on Jesus. Call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. His line is never busy because he knows what we've been through. He knows the suffering. He knows the pain. He was bruised for our iniquity, and the chastisement of our peace was upon his shoulder. He knows how to be that we were tempted. He knows because he was tempted by the devil to turn rocks into bread when he was hungry. I have to all say that every time because see, many people miss that. See, see, because that's the temptation. That's the first temptation. And, and, and we in the church don't realize that the kids on the street are being tempted to turn. Oh, and, and, Satan know he's able. Satan, Satan know he's able. And he know, Satan know we ain't to turn rocks into bread. Oh, see, some of y'all still ain't getting it. Let me make it plain. You got your kids in your family trying to turn some crack, rock cocaine, into some moolah. That's the first temptation. See, and we, we got to realize that, 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 that that's a real test. That's a real temptation when you lack something. But Jesus, he knew he was going to go through that. And, and he knows. So, 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 my, my, I, I don't even know how to go to these questions. How, help, help, just jump in and just give comments. I ain't no used to giving questions. This is a call on Jesus. One of the things that points out that, that, that keeps jumping out to me, you know, as a senior manager, mm -hmm. you know, you have to evaluate people. Mm -hmm. And you evaluate people on things that they are supposed to do consistently. And you evaluate people on things that they're supposed to do all the time. the time yeah all right god goes directly to all the time all the time up front he's telling us to be in a in, in a praise state of mind in a thankful state of mind all the time all the time but then in hebrews and this is a connection that i'm getting from it is that he's god 
all the time. All the time. And Jesus is there all the, the time. time. Yeah. You see what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So, yeah. so all the time, you know, we got this connection. We got this relationship that's alive. And, 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 and he is the source of hope. So in a sense, none of us are poor. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we've got a great God. Mm -hmm. That's able. That's able. And has a desire. Mm -hmm. I think it says now in there. Mm -hmm. Has a desire to uh to bless us. Uh, you know, Jeremiah 29, 11. Come on now. You know, he says, he says, he says, this is the plan I have for you. To prosper you, not to harm you, mm -hmm. but to give you hope. See that that hope. There's that hope. And the future. And the future. That's a powerful thing, man. And uh you know, when you go back to your daily application, it says this is to encourage one person. One person. It ain't nobody but yourself. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Mary and Sandra. Just, just to say what you want. Whatever comes to y'all. <laughs> Just say it's good. We're praise at all times. Because I mean, I mean, I mean, I, you know, just the fact that, that he knows everything that we go through, and you know, when you guys were talking about uh, taste the Lord and see that that uh, He is good, and you were saying that it's internal, we taste digested. This what he. This is what Jesus did. He already, and he already internally. He already knows, knows everything thing. that we right. have gone through and what we will go through. Yes, yes. So, um, in that, when we go to him, we can't think. Well, he doesn't know what I'm going through. Yeah. Right. Or when you say you sought help, and not only is it. Uh, frustrating when you seek help and people can't help you, but sometimes when you seek help and people don't understand yes. what you're going through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but that's not the situation. That's not Jesus. the situation with Jesus. He is the perfect, merciful, and faithful high priest that understands right. everything that we go through. Every human condition, he understands it. Hallelujah. So why would you go to him? Well, why would you praise him? Well, <laughs> I, I don't understand. It. Yeah, <laughs> well, they, we, we have a saying at all times. At all times, God is good all the time, and all the time, God God is. Is good. oh hallelujah! <laughs> praise the Lord. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Hallelujah! That's what we're gonna end our lesson today. For those who want to join us on the conference call. You can call in on the conference call, 619-639-4733. We're going on to overtime, and we're going to discuss this. We're going to get off this live Facebook. I hope you enjoyed yourself today. We're going to pray with you right now. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are humbled by your concern for us. We are so small in the grand scheme of things, yet. You love us beyond our ability to comprehend. We thank you for your deliverance, delivering us from the evil that surrounds us and the evil that lies even within us. We thank you, Lord, and we praise your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Remember, taste and see that the Lord is good. Facebook, be blessed and have a blessed week.